here. So I changed the title of my presentation and the actual title is uh, What Can Be Done by Now. So I, I want to talk about something that we can immediately do. Existing technology that we can just start to use. And I need to make some disclaimer. I am uh, very honored to be part of this excellent group of professionals and the next generation uh, working group, of course. But I have also a strong relation with the Europe's community, so we will have something that is probably not so usual for repository, more for Chris system. And uh, I'm a developer, so I, I will say something technical in some way. And I'm a very, very fun advocate of uh, the Space platform. So this means that I have uh, some specific example from uh, the Space community. So for uh, my great user, put it here. So uh, the agenda is very, very long, but it's uh, just uh, um, some quote from uh, the introduction of uh, the next generation um, working group report. And I want to highlight some uh, uh, facts that we have assumed about the uh, repository ecosystem. So we say that the mission of our repository is to manage and provide access to diverse intellectual output. And also in the part, we have a broad range of artifacts behind the uh, traditional publication. Many of us today are talking about different kind of content in the repository order to be and uh, this uh, trend is improving in the repository. I'm very happy to hear that, but I'm not fully convinced to be honest. In Italy, probably, we have a different landscape. I see a lot of repositories that just have bibliographic record or published paper without full text, without anything. Things are changing, but we are still far to have so much content and so much diversity in the repository. And the other important point is repository are not in a large, uh, larger network. And uh, when you are in a network, you need to be connected. You cannot have a network without wires some cable or without a Wi-Fi. Think about that. So you need to talk with each other, otherwise you are not a network. You are just silos. And the other point that we want to highlight is uh, uh, the repository needs to be the center of the uh, daily activities of the researcher. So we want to have the researcher to, to be engaged by the repository each day for their prime task. is not just something that is mandatory to, to fill with bibliographic information. So, Getting back to the first question, behind traditional publication, what does this mean? Okay, do you have video, audio in your, in your repository, you have that set? And what does this mean for you? Do you allow downloading this information, is it out? This does not mean you go behind traditional publication. Download the speed <coughs> of the file is not out. You need to provide really access to this information. If you are talking about data sets, what researchers want to do is to have a place where this data set is stored, is curated, is preserved for long term, but they want to be able to use. Researchers use a Google Sheet because they can just browse a long CSV file and they can share with the author and they can comment on that and so on. We want to replace this uh, private company tool with the institutional repository, but it's not enough to allow to download a CSV file. So there are existing uh, solutions in uh, our community for this call. Uh, SICAM is an excellent platform for that repository. And uh, another one is Dataverse. Uh, both platforms provide uh, visualization and uh, analysis of tabular data and some other kind of data in the system. And I want to also promote a bit this space Chris and this space CAM that is uh, uh, an open source add-on that uh, was really recently released. 
that allow you to integrate this space with Sikar. So, what I mean, when you have a this space record in this space place, uh, you can give more context to your dataset. And this is really important because to just have a CSV file without know what is about is very difficult to make it useful. So I want to create some cable between the, the network and I want to link my publication with the person so I need to have uh, rich information about the person, I need to have the ID, I need to have maybe other identifier but please, if we have an ID that is very used, start to use also you this identifier it will make the community rich and the project needs to be linked with the publication. We need to have the grant number, and so this is very important for open air and other projects. We need to link the public the data set with the publication so that uh, we can create an uh, interesting network of collaboration, as say today, we can, uh, who produce the data, we use this data and so on. And when we create a, a link between publication and asset, we want to have the inverse link automatically. So if a researcher finds the publication, they want to be connected to the asset and vice versa. And also we want to know about events and other uh, uh, resources that are related to the asset. So we have more context now, we are happy, but uh, again, we don't want to provide a button where you can download 100 CSV file or something like that. So we want to provide something that allows you to preview the content. Because uh, before to download, I want to understand if uh, it is the data set that I'm looking for. I want to, uh, maybe I don't want to allow immediate download because uh, we are open access, but we know that many institutions are have some concern about immediately share this content. It could be very useful to share sample and make a connect, direct connection with the researcher before to open completely the data. And uh, you want to uh, be able to paginate the visualization of the data, to filter, to search, to analyze, to better understand the data without leaving the research uh, distribution repository. And uh, you also want to provide some visualization, for instance, some map visualization or so on. What you have seen is all powered by open web services provided by SICAM. So this is very, very useful because it is a machine-to-machine -machine way to open your dataset. When a researcher uploads a tabular dataset in the institutional repository, SICAM is able to automatically create open web services so that a developer can use a mobile phone to provide value-added services on top of this dataset. And what about the images? The situation is quite similar in some way. Some astrophysics images can go behind the uh, the 5 gigabyte of size and uh, if you have high quality scanning book that are research material for humanities of course are typically over 100 megabytes for pages and uh, many images of similar dimension and uh, the structure of the images the image collection are very relevant for the research so to know the, the chapter sequence so to know the sequence of medical images so that you can look to the evolution of some phenomena and so on. These are all relevant information that need to be preserved. And you can do that. Sorry. You can do that using a, a standard protocol and format that is the IIIF uh, protocol family. So I will see you in complete what this means. When uh, you have a TIF uh, implementation in your repository, you have uh, a collection of uh, images, for instance, a scanning book that can have uh, can use the image API, the TIF image API, to provide you an effective way to access your image. So what you are seeing here is a 100 megabyte TIF file 
that is just rendered in less than one second on my, on my phone because you don't need uh, high level images to access it. You can get what you are able to see on your device. And uh, using the GPS presentation API, your image are keep together with the metadata. So when uh, you share information about your images, you have the metadata of the book, but you have also the metadata of the, the structure of the image collection. And this information are available in a machine readable form. This is very, very important because it means that you can share your information between repository within the network without loss of the data. And all of that is built using a native web user interface. So we are talking about HTML user interface. This means that this technology is uh, uh, allow you to use web annotation. So, you see web annotation here where you see the, the Dante word uh, highlighted that is just a transcription of this image file but could be some comments, some annotation of your image file and so on. And you can also search inside your images using the IIIF search API. So, the IIIF uh, protocol is a collection of uh, protocol and format that allow you effective use of your images, whatever images are. Uh, and as you see, there are ongoing discussion in uh, implementing IIIF uh, within this space, for instance. And the same applies also for the other Exactly the same requirement applies for audio video content. So I don't want to get more time on that. The only thing is, uh, please stay on open standard. On something that is machine readable is not property. So we cannot solve this problem using, I need mean to decide, uh, Adobe Media Streaming Server, or we cannot solve uh, the, the problem about image using flash or other proprietary technology. We need to have something that is web enabled. Because as uh, I said before, the network is the web. So anything that we do inside the repository needs to be done with standard web technology so that it can be shared with the other part of the network. And in the case of audio video streaming, you can rely on the MPEG dash format. It is an open standard that allows you adaptive streaming and support multiple chat, table of content, subtitles, annotation, and so on. What about open peer review? Uh, we have already had a presentation today about open peer review. The good news there, something exists. We have some code that we can use for this space. This could be not perfect. We can discuss about the functionality. It can be improved. We can discuss about if it is better to implement at the repository level or uh, on top of all the repository. But we need to start. And uh, we need to be pioneers on that to promote the open peer review in the community, to, to raise the adoption. And after that, we can make some difficult choices, different choices. The important thing about open peer review, in my opinion, is uh, that the workflow starts from the repository. This is the key point. If we just put the published PDF file into the repository, the repository is just that because uh, you don't have to do anything more with the PDF publisher uh, paper. You need to allow a researcher to work inside your repository. So they need to write a research uh, inside your repository. They need to discuss, to get comments from your repository. And this is the key point of the review. The second point is to capture the new content. When we will be reading, we will have a uh, 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 open peer review service on top of all the repository. What I want to be sure is that the new content will stay in the repository. As an institution, I want that my researcher when produce something will deposit the research output in the repository. But when the, my is the researcher that has paid with the fund of the institution, 
making some review. I want to have the review inside my repository, not on a private services that today is open and tomorrow I don't know. Something can change. So we can see what we, uh, the content where we want to perform the review in an aggregated way. We can see the results out of, uh, of the peer review process in an aggregated way. But the data needs to stay distributed. So in our vision we have the repository as data layer. And on top of the repository data layer we have built services. We don't mix, we don't need to mix the two aspects. Services are one thing and data need to be stay as much distributed as possible. This is exactly the point. So our repository, our part are not in a distributed network. And this is a, one other point about the triple of protocol that I really like because it's a big change uh, in, uh, uh, in the way that also can work. If we talk about uh, the IPMH protocol, that is a very successful, it's very important for our community quite tall. It is a protocol uh, similar to give and forget. The repository gives uh, their content to some aggregator and can just forget about their content. It's not required to take any further action. We need to be very uh, glad to good services like OpenAI, Base, Core that provide back services for the repository. But the protocol itself don't guarantee that anything can go <coughs> to the repository. This is what we need to change. And the AAAF standard is different because don't require to move the resources from one repository to another. You can aggregate images from different uh, repository without moving the content. The images and the services on top of these images reside on the single repository. So it's the single repository that is responsible to provide you the high quality images, to provide you the annotation, to react to your annotation. The, the image files are not transferred from one service to another. Of course, there are use cases where you need to transfer the content for instance, preservation. So, other important aspect do you see about uh, uh, the importance of the context of a data set. And uh, uh, this context is evident for uh, uh, a human. You look to the record of the database record and you see that you have a link to an author, to an organization, to a publication, and so on. But these aspects are not so evident for a machine. One way to make this aspect evident and understandable for a uh, machine is to implement some simple rule of the web that is uh, uh, hyperlink. So as a, you need to create a link from one resource to another. And one way is to adopt the signposting uh, pattern. That is uh, a simple, a uniform way to explain to another machine which link are present in your resources so that the machine is able to navigate from your item to your other page, from your item to your PDF file that is the complete representation. And the same posting is uh, essentially uh, an application of the REST 8 OIS uh, um, principle. So, how it works concretely? This is an example from the same post, uh, posting website. We have an article from uh, Ever, and uh, this article has a UI, and uh, the two authors have two different topics. So what we expect if you implement some posting in your repository is that when you ask for the either of your HTML pages, so if you ask Crossref for the resolution of uh, the UI, they should reply with saying this URL is actually uh, located in another place because the UI is just a way to resolve uh, the actual uh, uh, location.
location of the resources. So you have a 303 kilometer uh, code, you have the actual location, and you have in the intersection some link that are the actual URI of the orchid, of the author, and uh, a type link that is, uh, this relation is of the type author. So this orchid represents the author of this uh, of publication. Another protocol that uh, just, this should be just the last one, uh, that I want to promote is uh, Resource Sync. That is uh, uh, this, the successor of YQ Image as a use case implementation, for instance, but is also much more because it is faster, is readable, is better performance, scalable, and so on. But uh, in my opinion, uh, the most important factor are it allows real time notification, so something like very similar to what is presented by. Uh, our today and uh, uh, including recovery of missing messages so it's uh, resilient and also drive resource synchronization content and uh, uh, metadata are both managed but also it is a published subscribe uh, protocol so this means that uh, it solved uh, the problem to give and forget that we are with OIP image Just one slide about the Space 7, so to give you some uh, uh, concrete route on uh, the community. The Space 7 is going to, to be the next major release of the platform. It is expected for the, next, the start of next year. We have uh, the, the most important task for the Space 7 is to build a new user interface that uh, is, will be built on a new fresh uh, REST API that will implement the ETOS Principle. So it is completely in line with uh, our idea and the recommendation of the next generation. <coughs> and uh, I also have created some tickets for the community developer of the space to allow discussion around uh, site posting and resource sync. Uh, about resource sync, it exists an, uh, an old implementation. Uh, it was provided uh, as part of a GIST project, I think, but it's quite old and uh, it needs to be uh, refreshed. So if you want to make something concrete, please ask your institution to look to this new standard, to start use this new technology today, and uh, join the community. Give your voice on this thing and say if it is important for you or not. If you have a project, ask for collaboration, provide funding for the community development.